On the Zero Wasted Days podcast, I want to inspire you to push the boundaries of what's expected in your life and your business, to challenge norms and your growth edges, and to go after the most audacious dreams because I've seen for myself that anything is truly possible when you have a vision and are ready to go after it. Are you ready to jump in? Let's go. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Zero Wasted Days in 2024. I am so excited to be here recording with you in my first official full year. Last year we launched in March of 2023. So here I am starting January with you for the very first time. I love fresh starts. I love January. I love a Monday. I love any reason to give us some kind of intention and some just reason to think about intentionality and think about what's going to happen in front of us and looking into the crystal ball of 2024 or any year, is just one of the most pleasurable things that I love to do. As you know, I am Suzanne Acteson. I am a life-first business mentor. I love helping women create lives completely by their own design, help them grow businesses that let them live life first. And I love to do so through my coaching programs, through this podcast, through all of the different channels that I come to you on every week. Now, January 2023, if I look back, and one of the things that we do when we step forward into a new year, or at least that I do, that is, I think, a very kind of cathartic process, is that I actually look back. So when I think back to the last year, I've journaled on this, I've been meditating on this a little bit as I really come towards the end of one year and go into a new one, I really think about what has transpired before I really start putting pen to paper in terms of my vision for the coming year. And when I think back to January, 2023, I was kind of in a time of like just unraveling and I'd been feeling like I had been in a bit of a, and I've talked about this on, on different episodes and a fertile void, like just in a bit of a void of sorts in a lull, which I guess I just allowed myself to feel. And it is really important when you're going through ebbs and flows in your business. And this is one of the things that I have learned along the way. And I help my clients with all the time because they're like, you know, we kind of hanging on controlling the outcomes and controlling every aspect of our businesses. And one of the best gifts I've given myself, and I know that I've been able to help guide other women in, is actually just loosening that grip a little bit and allowing yourself to feel and allowing yourself to just go through those lulls and not make it mean something. And at first, it was a little bit unnerving last year, this time last year, when I had invested a lot of money in a brand new coach. It was the most that I'd ever invested ever. And it was to be a part of her mastermind for the year. And at the same time, I was, I hit this fertile void. I think obviously there's no coincidences. I think this is obviously, this was synchronized. And there were so many things that I'm not going to talk about here today that I was able to do and integrate and learn about myself in this kind of like big unraveling that helped me then knit things back together. But I entered into the new year, new investments. I had the energy of the new year, but I still was in this no man's land and from a client point of view, the lull or the fertile void had started a few months prior, maybe October, November, 2022. And I had some clients that were finishing up in my one-on-one -on -one practice and I let those clients finish up. I didn't take on any new clients. And so I came to January with very few active clients and very few programs running at the time. I had my membership and that was just about it. And to be honest, as somebody who loves doing and who thrives off achieving one of the, this is, this was a growth edge for me. And so it felt at times it felt quite uncomfortable, but I knew in my heart of hearts and also with the support of this new coach, it was Kate Scudder that I had to lean into this discomfort. And I remember writing in my journal and I even look back into one of my journals at the beginning of last year. And I always write myself a letter in the, in, to my future self. And I could see that I see and also feel that so much of what I wanted in my business and in my life 
really lay within me. And I started the year with this kind of massive cracking open of myself and this unraveling of my business was the start of that. Now, when I look back to the kind of the most important things that help me one, knit my business back together, but also help me further unravel and help me further deepen my understanding, my healing, then belief in myself came in to play in the context of this mastermind by way of connection and sisterhood in the mastermind. Those were the two most paramount things at the beginning of last year that really held me in support of where I was then and where I needed to go. I didn't know it at the time. Actually, my word of last year was connection. So it was an intentional thing to be more connected with other women. But when I'm now in reflection, those were the two kind of pinnacle things that really helped me peel apart the layers and also put them back together again. So within this mastermind container that I was in, I really started exploring and learning how to share more of what was going on and be more vulnerable. I have always really valued connection and being in masterminds, but I think that I did so in prior years in a little bit of a surface level way. I could tell that there was something there. I love the networking. I love meeting women. I love working in collaboration with them, but I wasn't going deep enough. And I guess with one of my values is actually optimism. And I think with optimism as a value, I think I also really learned over the years that, and one of my parents like lines that they say is that we we can only go on from here. And that is a really beautiful way of always looking forward and saying, let's pick up the pieces. We can only go on from here. But I think as a result, I learned to mask what was actually going on. So if I was feeling heavy or if I was feeling hurt or if I was feeling sad, I learned how to mask that. And also in a very, what, what I guess I felt, I was in a, a very privileged state and I, I learned this term comparative suffering. I would always say that my suffering and my pains were never as bad as some other people's. And now this is a thing. If you actually Google comparative suffering, it is a real thing. And it's something that a lot of us do because we think that what we're going through isn't as bad as those incredibly horrific images that we're seeing on TV or in the Middle East or that our suffering around feeling uneasy in our businesses is not nearly as bad as those families at Christmas that are going without. There is no point and it's also not doing yourself any justice in terms of healing and accepting that your pain is your pain and the only way to address it and get through it and to heal it is to accept that it is something that is significant for you. And I think I had been doing this for a long time because even inside this container where we were welcomed to share things more vulnerably, I would almost preface everything that I had to say with, I know this isn't as bad as, and then I would go on to share. And it was reflected and mirrored back to me how I was not accepting the reality of my own suffering. And so I was masking it and I was pushing it down. And then as a result, I really wasn't being real with myself. Another area that I started, and I mentioned just earlier that the two kind of biggest areas for me in this unraveling and knitting back together were connection and sisterhood. One of the areas that I really dove into headfirst as I started inside this mastermind was in the realm of sisterhood. And it was really quite hard for me to realize at first and admit that I had some big sister wounds and I didn't really even know what that meant. I realized that over the last whatever, my my whole existence, when I have always had friends, I had friends and I moved at the age of 10 and then I moved again in high school and then, and I moved at 26 again and then I moved again at 40 something, early 40s when we came to France, must have been 42. I have moved a fair bit in my life and I think what I have done is that over the years, I have never really had any super close relationships that I would 
necessarily call best friends. I've always had lots and lots of close friends, but never anybody that I guess I would call a best friend. And I think one of the reasons for that in reflection is that I never really let anybody in and I, I was always doing this kind of masking. And I would often not want to share my vulnerabilities. And so the more that you don't share your vulnerabilities and don't share what's actually going on, the less that you're connecting with people. So if you're always having a conversation with a friend or a colleague or a peer, and it's just really surface level and don't get comfortable sharing more vulnerably, you don't create deep connections with people. You don't create even just heart-centered connections. And I can see now how I have done this almost through my whole lifetime. Luckily, in my mid-40s, I'm coming to the, this realization and I'm able to not just address it, but heal it and get better at it. And this is what I love about the whole personal development journey. You're unaware of certain things until it's brought to the surface and you're like, holy, I've been doing this my whole life. But it is one of the things that I love to do and explore in my coaching and in my coaching practice is to look at behaviors and see what's blocking us. And th th this is one little example. The sister wound for me is something that I really feel has been blocking me from having deeper connections with other women. And when women don't open up, then we just stay at this kind of surface level to protect ourselves or protect others. Many of us are people pleasers and we're just trying to like please somebody else. We don't want to burden other people. Or we maybe think, like I said about our suffering, we maybe think our suffering isn't enough or isn't, isn't suffering enough. And, oh, I'm just catching up with a friend for a coffee. I don't want to drag the conversation down. Or maybe we're actually scared of doing that inner work. So these are all different reasons why we don't dive in a little bit deeper. But, you know, biologically as women, we are wired for connection and for nurturing and for having those connections with other women. And it is a fundamental human need and even more so of women. Women have a really unique relationship with connection that's different to men. Our hormone oxytocin in our body is often referred to as the love hormone or that kind of bonding hormone. And it is profoundly boosted when women connect with each other. And so when we connect with each other and really connect with each other, like I was starting to do in this mastermind, I started having these feelings of, holy, like someone actually cares. And I feel like the, on, on the receiving side, so when I was being held in sisterhood in these conversations, I felt something completely different that I hadn't felt before, but I also on my side of things felt liberated, felt free, felt much more, I don't know, I guess just that I was getting to the problem. I was like peeling away the layers of the onion and I was like, ah, there's the problem or there's the challenge or there's something to become aware of. So the more that we connect with other women and then find out how to actually connect even more deeply, the better our mental health, the it points to actually women living longer it actually reduces stress and it really empowers you as i said when we started actually you know diving into these conversations inside this mastermind i was in it really felt empowering so it might have been quite vulnerable and there were times of tears and feeling like oh my gosh what's going on but it was also at the other side very empowering and yet so many of us are not very good at this and are made through our lives and we become very competitive with each other and are kind of boss women and through corporate and through this very patriarchal system that, that continues to perpetuate this and continues to foster this. So personally, this past year, I have really valued this connection. And little did I know at the beginning of the year that saying, you know, I wanted to increase connection and increase connection was really important for me in 2023. Little did I know that it was really going to peel apart the layers of what connection meant for me and allow me to go even deeper than I ever imagined. And as I really got deeper with people, I also just got much more deeper with myself. And as I started opening myself up more and asking more for what I wanted, I started doing a lot more kind of deeper inner work. But I also started on the side, this is the energetic bit together with the strategic bit, I also started knitting my business back together. And so while the kind of the great unraveling was happening for me personally over maybe almost even five or six months, I started knitting my business back together. 
And what happened this whole past year has taken a lot of patience. And I guess one of the things that I talk about is just central to any vision is having a real strong belief in our mission. And I, I guess my belief in what I was doing has never wavered. And so that has been really super helpful for me to be the grounding roots to what I'm doing. But at the end of the day, it was absolutely worth the work. The more that I reconnected with myself and the more I was able to get back to my work and my mission at hand. And so one of the most important foundations and parts of my business that I started pulling apart and working on at the very beginning, I'm going to go through a few of the kind of business things that I really started to knit back together. I was working hard, reconnecting with myself, connecting in a new way in sisterhood and unfurling all of the layers. But on the other side, strategically, I was really starting to knit this business back together in a way that just felt like it was aligned and it was going to light a fire in my belly again. And as I talk about with a a lot of my clients and a lot of my programs, being super clear and reconnecting with my soul client was one of the first places that I went. And so over the period of this kind of great unraveling, as I said, I had stopped taking clients because I just felt like there was something energetically off with the clients that I was attracting into my world. And a lot of what I was putting out into the world in terms of my messaging and my content was attracting me people who I I just don't feel were ultimately truly aligned and truly soul aligned with who I was. And many of the women, and I love them and dearly, and and I still am in, in touch with a lot of them, but I was putting out these vibes of me being able to fix them. And I give a lot of advice as a business coach, but at the end of the day, everything that we do and everything that we integrate in our businesses, no matter what business you're in, whether you're a coach, a life coach, a service provider, you have a bricks and mortar store, it doesn't really matter. The work has to happen within you. It can't be someone saying, okay, here's a strategy, go and do it if you don't actually believe in it or if you energetically have all of these things that are standing in the way. And so I really sat with this and I started really thinking about my soul client and I wanted to think about women that were going to be inspired by me and wanted to be guided and mentored, but who were really open to doing this inner work and to really align their desires for a bigger, better, amazing life with the practices that I knew that it took for them to reach their dreams. And so... This was a tweak for me that I was making in thinking about the woman that I really wanted to work with. And as opposed to me getting helicoptered in and like fixing a problem strategically and then getting helicoptered out, I really started putting messaging out there. And I'm going to talk about messaging in a second, but I started putting messaging out there and I started really just thinking about this woman that also needed to do this inner work. And the more that I got clear about her, the more that she came to the surface. So I think as you are going into this new year, this is an exercise that everybody should do multiple times in the span of your business, even if not every single year, is to get really clear and continuing to refine who you work with is central to you, number one, being in alignment with yourself, and two, to your clients getting the results and the transformations that they want. Do the soul client work, get clear, understand What makes her tick? How does she feel? What does she want? And what's standing in her way? Get super, super clear about all of these things because at your roots, this is one of the kind of the foundational elements of the roots of your business. It is going to inform everything that you do in your business. Everything from your content to your programs, to your messaging, to your systems, to your customer experiences, everything has to do with your soul client, with your client that you want to attract into your world. The second area that I really started working on in knitting back together my business was raising the bar with my thought leadership. Now, I really, I sat with and I spent some time really thinking about from the outside perspective in what I wanted to be known for and what differentiated me. And so really honing in on my thought leadership and really speaking my truth. So like one of the first things that I did at the beginning of the year was launching this podcast. And so launching this podcast felt very 
heart-centered for me and elevating. And so I was really raising the bar in terms of my thought leadership. So here I am just knitting back together who I want to work with, but I was ready and I was really feeling that fire in my belly to hit the ground running. And I did so with my podcast as one of the first strategic things I did in the year. It has connected me with the most amazing women. It has opened up conversations I would never have had otherwise and really made me on a weekly basis reflect and gather my thoughts, like I said, on a weekly basis. So to have this vehicle, to have this medium and this reason and this channel to speak your truth requires that when you do this, that you reflect on what you're actually going to deliver and what you're actually going to say. And so sometimes I had guest episodes and I really pride myself in spending time getting to know who that person is and coming up with good questions for them. But also in solo episodes, you really have to think about, okay, what's my objective here with this podcast? What do I want to do? What are the kind of questions I'm going to ask myself? And, and do a lot of reflective thinking and gathering of your thoughts. And so that is a very cathartic process in doing that. When you, it's like when you write or when you journal or, or you write a blog. So one of the key takeaways here I want you to think about in going into next year is thinking for yourself, what do you want to be known for? If you want to elevate your thought leadership. And I think a lot of these things that I have done this year are things that are great things to come back to in everyone's business at any time. So perfect time of the year to do that is in January. And so honing in on your soul client and thinking about this second bit, which is the thought leadership and thinking about what you personally want to be known for, then, you know, pick a way you can do that. Pick a medium that feels like is going to be heart centered for you. I didn't know that podcasts were going to be such soul fuel for me, but I really loved recording them. I find them, I wouldn't say easy. Like I, I do have to give them a lot of thought. Like they are quite strategic and take some time to do, but I find them easeful. I really find them energy giving. And I think that is a massive indicator for anything that you're doing. If something is an energy suck, then it's something that you want to let go of or outsource. But if, if something is energy giving and I always record these and I'm like, this is what I love to do, then it's something that you know that it, that is aligned. And just start the thing. Just be messy. Get it down as one of your goals for the year. And remember, you don't have to have it all worked out at the very beginning. Just start somewhere. So that was the number two thing, that the thought leadership and elevating your thought leadership in 2024 is an area where you can really focus to elevate your business and elevate yourself. The third area that I really worked on was refining my message and dialing it in my content. I found some words to use in my messaging that really fit what I had already been embodying. And that was life first business mentor, or just the use of the word life first. And it really started to shape and help me articulate my mission in a really powerful way. And so I have always been living this way and embodying a life first business and life but I didn't have the words to describe it. And so landing on those words has been a really powerful kind of catalyst for me to then springboard off of and use in my methodology and in my title and just throughout this podcast even. And so think about your messaging as you're going into this year and our messaging in our businesses is always is going to zig and zag as you go. And this is important to keep meeting your soul client where she is at. Keep working personally on refining how you speak to her, what is relatable, what resonates. And this is going to create magnetism and it's going to attract Track the most amazing people into your world. So keep dialing this in. And the, the last thing that I have done when I reflected on, on my year was really resisting the urge to do more by adding more complexities to my business. I really worked hard on keeping my business really simple. Now, this took work because I love being supported and having a team to help me execute on all of my big ideas. But this year I had to work really hard not to scale by adding team, but to keep analyzing and growing much more deliberately and patiently. 
And I guess I did this because I learned in the prior years how I had probably grown. I'd grown quite quickly a couple of years ago. And because I love being supported and I love working with team, I was like, yes, I'm going to get this woman to do this and I'm going to get this person to do this. But what actually happened in the end was that I was outsourcing stuff that I didn't really even thoroughly understand myself. And I could see that I was executing things and implementing things into my business that I didn't know whether or not they were going to work. So it was quite a, a risky thing to go, okay, I'm going to outsource this and we're going to put this new system into place, but I'm not really even sure if that system's going to work yet. So I just dialed it back a bit. And I now try to try everything myself first. So no giving it over to a team member first, I must try it. Then if it does work and the system works and we're like, yep, this is going to happen. And I'm going to try mini chat and I'm going to do this, that, the other. I'm going to do this with my newsletters. I'm going to, I try it first and then I delegate it. So this is something that has really helped me. It does require that you get back on the tools a little bit, that your fingers are in the pie. But I actually think that's really important because then when you go and then delegate it, you have all of the analysis and the insights and the know-how about what elements of that system or that process or that tool or that software that works that, to get the best out of it. And trying for me new things and new products in my business is, is one of the things that I wanted to do this year. And so some product development to try digital products and some lower end offers, bringing people in through a new, I hate the word funnel, but a new funnel and trying some new lead generation systems as well has this year been really successful has, has added hundreds of people to my list. So now I can this next year, I can outsource a little bit of that. I can get smart about it, but it's always trialed first and then it's assessed before we roll it out. And so don't think that scaling necessarily needs to mean more team or more complexities. You can scale simply as I have discovered, not just discovered, but I have trialed and I have practiced this year and it actually can make you much more profitable. So, those are some of my reflections on the past year, on 2023, and this coming year feels like a whole new level of growth. And I say that not because every year you have to be growing, but I've really gone back to basics this year and I feel like I've really been tending the soil. I've been adding that compost to my soil this, pa this past year. And now I really feel like it's time to plant some new seeds and to take some even bigger risks and to keep asking. I've always been really good at asking in anything that I do, but I want to keep asking and keeping that at the forefront of what I'm doing, but also continue to be open to receive. And so when I say I need to be open to receiving, I need to work on how I feel in holding more and working potentially on some blocks and some energetic things that might be actually standing in my way of receiving and to feeling safe earning more or being more or holding more. And I have all of these strategic elements that I'm going to be executing, a few of them, but I'm going to be doing this energetic work so that I can feel safe in holding more. I will share with you that one of my goals next year, one of my big goals is to stand on more stages, both virtual and in real life. So podcast stages, real stages, masterminds, virtual conferences. So I am working on my story. I'm working on my keynote speech, pitching to people, retreats, conferences, anywhere that I can stand on a virtual or a real stage and talk about my life first methodologies is my greatest mission next year because I know how life changing this can be for people. I also know in continuing to expand my own horizons, I'm going to need to continue to do my own personal work. And so this is a given. And I hope to really continue to deepen my practices to also support a focus on my health and my well being. In the last three or four months, I've felt myself age for the first time this year. I am 48. And so all of these little things have been creeping up as reminders for myself. I think they're just little signs. Perimenopause hit me quite hard this year and my body has really felt it. And so this personal work and also my health and well-being is absolutely going to take center stage. I have aches and pains that were never there before. And I know some of the reasons for this. Like I have done a lot of research and I've been reading and I didn't always know this. That your estrogen starts going up and down as you get into menopause and perimenopause. I have arthritis and it has flared up with inflammation. And so all of this kind of ups and downs of hormones has required that I sit with this. And at first I was like, 
what the? I'm not ready for this. I'm only 48 and I'm like achy and breaky and standing up and things like that. But I have really had to, and again, this year of patience and just sitting back, I've really had to listen. And so I'm listening. <laughs> and these signs are telling me that this has to be a non-negotiable. And so this is also, like I said, the personal work, the strategic stuff that I talked about, and there are more other strategic projects that are going to happen, my health and well-being, and then the last kind of component as well that is going to continue to take center stage for myself and my family is travel. It continues to be a focus for us. My boys are at the perfect age to do this, and this is really important for us as a family. It bonds us, and it really inspires my boys who are eight, almost 13, and 16, as they are becoming men, like my 16 year old is becoming a man. And I really think that this element of us traveling together, and I've also gone on trips just with them individually. So I took one away each on each trip that I went to Canada this year. And I think this is fundamental in their development and we, we will continue to push the bar on this front and taking advantage of living in Europe too, because there are so many places that we can be at a stone's throw on a weekend for a week during our school holidays, and we get lots of holidays here in France. So those are some of the things that I have reflected on over the last year that I am leaning into for 2024. This podcast is just a gift for me to share with you. I will continue to take you along the journey. I have some of the most incredible guests coming up as well, and I'm really excited for 2024 and for what it has in store. I look forward to connecting with more of you. I hope to get to know more of you. If you are listening and we don't know each other, please jump into my DMs and introduce yourself. Tell me that you're listening because this podcast, like a medium and I guess this channel is a bit of a it is not a lonely place but you put a lot of effort and a lot of your heart and soul out into the world and it is nothing better than when someone comes back and says oh my gosh I love that episode or just I, I listen every week and I find it inspiring I would just love to hear from you so I hope that you have an amazing January this is coming out on January 1st and I look forward to connecting with each and every one of you in the coming Thank year. Thank you for joining me for this week's episode of Zero Wasted Days. I truly hope that you found it to be valuable and inspirational as you create and you grow your own business and work towards living more life first. I would love you to subscribe, to like this video, and of course, if you have any comments, drop them in here below. Also, if you tag me on socials, I would love to get to know you. I love connecting with my audience, so be sure to tag me at Suzanne Acteson or at Zero wasted days underscore and I will see you inside the DMs as well as here for the next episode next week.